If we can all take our seats, please. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, por favor, tomen asiento. Quiero presentarles en esta noche el jefe de policía de Austin, our illustrious police chief, Joseph Chacon, who's going to say a prayer for us. How about a round of applause for him? Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Chacon. I'm the chief of police here in Austin. It's my honor to serve in that capacity. Um, this is one of the safest cities in America, and I'm extremely proud of that. You have a fine police department, the fire department. Eh. But he got, they, they do have an awesome chief. And of course, we've got our, our uh, EMS chief here as well tonight. Uh, to all the electeds that are here this evening, thank you for coming, Senator Lucio, and uh, you know, the mayor, Mayor Gonzalez, and we have the Mexican consulate that's here this evening. Of course, we have Bobby Pulido that's here tonight. And somewhere, I lost him, Paul Rodriguez is here this evening as well. Thank you for being here, our celebrities. But my job right now is to offer a prayer. So uh, I, if I could, if I could get everyone to just, you know, please take a moment and bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. Thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all of our ways, that you know what concerns us, that you cover us as with a shield. We ask for your guidance so that we may walk fully in your blessing and goodness today. We ask that your face would shine upon us, that you would open the right doors for our lives, for our loved ones, that you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those that we need to walk away from. Establish the work of our hands and bring to fulfillment all that you have given us to do in these days. We pray that you would make our way purposeful, our footsteps firm out of the, your goodness and your love, and give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and make us strong by your huge favor and grace. Please bless this food that it may nourish our bodies and that we may use our bodies to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. How in the world do I follow that? Here I am again following Chief Chacon. That's not right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frank Fuentes. I am the chairman of the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association. And tonight, and tonight I will act as your master of ceremonies. How about that? I want to I wanna recognize Don Javier Arias, who is our state chairman. Javier, do you remember when we started back in the early 90s? We started in a parking lot, and here we are today at the Renaissance. ¿Qué tal, eh? eh? Con un taxido el vato, eh? Lo tenían en sale en Walmart, and I took advantage of Javier. What can I tell you? Miren, uh, we're going to change the agenda a little bit because our mayor is running a little bit late, but we have our wonderful friend from South Texas, an incredible public servant who has served this great state of ours for over 48 years as a public servant. This is my friend, your friend, Texas friend, our dear Senator Lucio. Senator Lucio, if you don't mind stepping up. Senator Lucio, if you don't mind, we're gonna start with your program first, and that way we'll wait, that way we'll give the uh, the Mayor, Mayor Atler, an opportunity to get here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our senator. He told me privately back there, I'm going to get rid of you because you're the oldest one here, and then we'll have a good time. <laughs> no, it's just kidding. Pancho, Frank. I would not miss this for the world. I was thinking back there, you know, I've been here 36 years. I'm going to retire. My son was in the house 16 years. He's going to retire. 
And it took us all this time to meet people like the Stevens and others that are here tonight, outstanding Texans, um, you know, to meet them. Uh, all this time, we've been working too hard at the Capitol. But I, I do want to take this opportunity that we're all in this together. We're all in this together. We have always been together. We just disagree once in a while, but we never, never drift apart. We come together in good times and in bad times and hard times and easy times, and we make things happen for our great state, for the people of our great state. That's who you are. You are the one that we work for, and we want to echo your sentiments at all times because we know that you know better uh, because you're in the front lines with your families, your work, your businesses, and everything that, that you do. So I'm here in behalf of the whole legislature, quite frankly, men and women from every corner of the state who really love their jobs as I do. And we want to make certain that when we leave there after 140 days of our legislative sessions every other year, which is odd numbered years when we meet, that we do the right thing for you in education and healthcare, especially in business, which is the backbone of our society because that produces jobs, keeps people, quite frankly, at work, families together united, and we're passing through. And we need to, Chief, I love your prayer. What a beautiful prayer. And all chiefs are important, especially fire chiefs. And all chiefs are important, especially the ones that tell us what to do at home, like my wife. She says, now I'm going to want half of that, pay, that retirement check. Lisa, you said it. You got it. You got it. Whatever makes you happy, sweetheart. But uh, I'm so proud and honored to have this opportunity to, to recognize some outstanding Texans, uh, people that you and I know. You're here from all over the state. I know a former commissioner, a great friend of mine, Frank Puente, and his lovely wife, Reed, are with us. Let's give them a big hand from Harlingen, Texas. Harlingen, Texas. All right, we have um, someone that's dedicated themselves 25 years, um, dedicated service to the medical field in Austin ISD, Director of Health Services. Uh, let's hear it for Alana Pejerano. Let's have her come up here right now. Alana. And I know thank you very much for all the wonderful things that you do in the, in the course of your work. And we have a beautiful Texas flag that we want to present you here on behalf of all those present, uh, members of the legislature. Congratulations for a wonderful job done. And we also have a symbol of excellence, of leadership. I've always said, ladies and gentlemen, that leadership is not the ability to tell people what to do. Leadership is the ability to make people want to do the right thing through example, the way you live your life. This young lady has lived a beautiful life, and she's made a positive impact for everyone. Let's give her another big hand. Congratulations. I'm honored beyond a... Uh, thank you. There's too many gifts. I'm honored uh, to be here tonight, but more than that, I'm honored to stand next to Mr. Fuentes, who never takes credit and really deserves it. Um, we came to him in desperate need for COVID vaccines to help our communities of color, which are very important to me. And this is a gentleman that stepped up, and I've been side by side with him on many clinics, giving shots, seeing him work at grocery stores, reaching out to the Hispanic community. And I'm so grateful, I do get emotional, but I'm grateful that our families, thousands of families um, have been served with what you all do tonight. So it means a great deal to me and my team and to all of you helping um, those communities in need. So thank you again, Mr. Fuentes. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the, the honor. Thank you all. Thank you. 
she said that she received lots of gifts. Well, the contractors like to give her a gift. Our usual gift is a bottle of tequila, my friends. <laughs> a bottle of tequila, because every once in a while, she just deserves to relax, a person like her. So here you go, my friend. Thank you. This is Siete Leguas yeah. from Saltillo, Coahuila. That is amazing. You bet. Thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. All right, we'll continue now. We want to recognize another outstanding Texan uh, in, the, uh, in the area of the media, media industry for over 20 years, VP and general manager of Univision in Austin, Texas. Let's hear for Christine Escobar. Christine um, belongs to a very important industry, quite frankly. Uh, if it wasn't for the media, obviously, we couldn't contact uh, the people in our communities, our state and country. And your, actually, your media is, is alive and well and strong in the Rio Grande Valley as well. I have to mention that because I know Larry pretty well down there. But congratulations, Christine. And I want to present to you a Texas flag. And also a symbol of excellence um, for being an exemplary employee of your industry uh, and one that has done so much to make it even better today. Congratulations from all of us. Well, I'm not Christine. <laughs> My name is Blanca Gaitan, and I do work at Univision, and I have been at Univision for 20 years. I started in 2003. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to come because she's feeling sick. But it is an honor for us to be here representing Univision, and it is an honor to work close to Frank uh, during the COVID. It was amazing to work with him. He makes everything so much easier. And it is great, Frank, what you do with, for our community. Thank you so much for making us part of that. Thank you. And thank you for this. On behalf of Univision and on behalf of Christine, thank you. Thank you for this recognition. So, can I keep the bottle? <laughs> so, so, no, no, Blanca, the bottle of tequila is not for you. It is for, it is for Christine, it's for Christine. But again, it is a bottle of Siete Leguas tequila, one of the best tequilas uh, I've ever tasted, and I know tequila, let me tell you. So, here you go. Thank you, sir. I'll make sure she keeps the flag and the... But and not the, the tequila. <laughs> I made sure it was our table. <laughs> there you go. Thank Congratulations. you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, let's hear it for Christine one more time. You know, Christine, if you need some lemon or lime, uh, I got a big tree in the backyard. <laughs> okay, well, got the next one that we want to recognize is uh, this young man um, obviously deserves a lot of praise and, and thank, thanksgiving from so many people. In recognition of 17 years of exemplary service for the people of Texas as an investigator for the Capitol Habeas Unit for the Federal Defender for the Western District of Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Adrian De La Rosa Castillo. I want to say a few words about Adrian. So several months ago, Adrian calls me. And I've known Adrian since he was a, a, young, a young man. When I had hair, I had a, a thin waist at the time. I actually had some charm. I've lost all of that since. But I've known him for a long time. And he called me, and it was a very interesting case because he works with habeas corpus cases. And there was this lady that had been sentenced to death. And 
he shared, he shared the file with us, and the girls that work with us at the office, they immediately said, this is so wrong, she, she ought not to be sentenced to death. And Adrian just worked really hard, and we, and with, through the help of the senator and the help of so many folks, she's getting a new trial. Give her a round of applause. Adrian, you certainly have been exemplary, and Frank uh, has told me all about you, and I know your family's with you here tonight, as other families are here to, to um, you know, back up their, their loved ones. But you too will receive this um, gavel from the te Texas Senate. Uh, it's a mark of, of excellence, and you certainly have, you know, earned it with all the incredible work you've done over the years. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. It's truly an honor to be here with everyone tonight. So many folks in this room that I truly, truly admire, community leaders throughout. Thank you to Chairman Frank Fuentes and the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association for inviting me and my family and friends to this beautiful event. To Senator Lucio, what an honor to be here with you and to receive this special recognition, sir from you. I'm so happy to share this momentous occasion with you, considering all of the tremendous work you've done throughout your public service career, sir. Thank you so, so much. Especialmente, estoy muy feliz estar aquí con mis papás y mi hermano. Los quiero mucho. Gracias, gracias siempre por el apoyo que me han dado. Esto es para ustedes. To my friends, Tisa and Laramie, thank you so much for your constant support and the work this truly means the world. One last thing, to Tivon Chardle and the Austin Capital Habeas Union and the Federal Public Defenders, thank you all for believing in me and trusting me as your colleague day in and day out. We have a great work ahead of us and it's because of the great partnerships with folks and leaders like Chairman Fuentes and Senator Lucio that I'm hopeful for what tomorrow brings. I'm hopeful for the amazing things that we can accomplish in the future. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, again. Again, he goes away with a tequila. But this time, Adrian, I want you to share this with your father. He looks like he would like tequila. So there you go, my friend. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank you, man. You One of the things that I forgot to say, and I... I have to share this with you. Um, one of the proudest, proudest moments of my life was when I saw my son get elected to the House of Representatives 16 years ago. And he has a young family, and he told me, Dad, I want to retire. I said, Son, I want you to take my place. <laughs> <laughs> he would have made a great senator. But he decided to retire because he wants to spend more time with his eighth grader and his fourth grader. Eddie Lucia the fourth, and I, uh, I certainly uh, appreciate and admire uh, how much of a dad he is. So I forgot to say that his name is also affixed on the, on the certificate. And I, I just um, got to tell you, it, it's been a joy to work with him as a father and son. And, uh, and the, the one thing I need to share with you, which is important because I know we're here in unity we're here because we're one Texas family. It's when people from the House would come over, representatives, excuse me, from the House would come over, and then our senators also would, would share with me what they thought about my son, Eddie Lucia III. They would say this, he's amazing, he's intelligent, he, he reaches across the aisle, he works with everyone, he listens. You know what? And that, um, that is something that's most important uh, in in every everything in life, uh, especially in marriage, when you can really come together and and make a great family of it all. So, I wanted to share that Eddie Eddie Lucia the third signature is on this. Now, the next the next man is also very very special, and I've met him a long time ago. I'm much older than he is, but he, he's, um, he's got miles to go before he sleeps, I hope and I pray, because he's an amazing man. The state of Texas and the House of Representatives joins together in saluting the work, uh, and recognizing this exemplary, the exemplary contributions that Paul Rodriguez 
has done in the arts and entertainment industry. Pablo, get up here. Don't keep us waiting. Oh, there you go, the man. He's been exemplary in the arts and entertainment industry, comedian, film, and television actor. He is what it's all about in America. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Rodriguez. Uh, this is an amazing gathering. The chief of police did the prayer. I've never seen that before. Uh, I thought he'd say, oh, precious God, you have the right to remain silent. But he didn't go that route. The Texas uh, Hispanic contractors give you tequila. I don't know how to feel about this. I'd like to find out what roads they worked on so I could avoid them. Yeah. But I'm sure they mean well. I don't get no gavel, thank God, because uh, I wouldn't know how to explain that to the security at the airport, you know? All right, take me to Cuba. This is a perfect example of what I feel about Texas. You know, you, you get drunk and you use violence. Uh, so you could get a lot done with this, you know? Most cities will give you a key, but uh, they don't tell you what door. Texas is right to the point. You, know, you get drunk, son, and you wallop somebody in the head. Don't listen next time. I want to thank you. I, I, I really, uh, really don't deserve this. I mean, I think uh, when you help others, it's, uh, it's you who benefits. You know, I, you can tell a lot by, uh, about people, like you were talking about your son. You can tell about, a lot about their parents by the way they comport themselves. My father, uh, a humble man, always kept that in mind. He said, you represent me. I have a wonderful son. I, I wish I would have had more, but... Uh, you know, it wasn't up to me. And uh, I have a wonderful son who, who's done a lot of wonderful things. He's a, he didn't choose the, 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 the career I wanted him, but then uh, that's the freedom. You know, they decide what to do. But in his, uh, in his time, he, uh, he's a skateboarder, which uh, it bothered me. Uh, I didn't think you could make a living like that. But, uh, but he has uh, got Nike to give him... Uh, a lot of money to, to open skate parks in some of the most uh, ghetto, uh, poor areas. He uh, opened one in New Orleans in the Ninth Ward, and uh, violence has been uh, uh, stemmed there, and the kids are, are skating. And, and then where I grew up in Compton and Watts, he opened one there. And uh, also the gangs have respected, and there's been no violence there. And uh, these, are, these are great treasures, you know, that I, uh, I, uh, I think I did something right. And as you speak about your son, you glow, and you seem to be, uh, you figure that out of all the mistakes that, uh, that obviously we make, we did one thing right. We, uh, we uh, uh, send our, our values given to us by our parents, we pass it on, and uh, it helps all the community. And I'm going to go over there and be quiet for a minute and contemplate what to do with this. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Santa Claus has a black bag. Uh, I want to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas. Remember, there's 20 days left for shoplifting, so get out there and, uh, and do what you got to do. Thank you. You're ready for the trapeze there. Wow. <laughs> this young man, everybody knows as well. And I met his grandpa uh, right after a boxing match in the, the valley one day, many years ago. And he introduced himself. He was just, Yo soy Don Jose Pulido. He said, I love the Pulido. I know, I know Roberto. Roberto and I are in the same generation. He says, I want you to help my son. He's going to run for public office. I said, Roberto's running for public office. He'll win. I said, no, no, Eloy, Eloy. And I had never met Eloy. Eloy became my compadre. I baptized his little girl. Now she's finishing college. She's a beautiful young lady, smart. 
Uh, all the Polidos are beautiful people, and uh, our next honoree is very special, very special. We play his music at home, and, you know, it's just uh, my wife can't stop dancing. I can because my bones hurt. <laughs> my knees hurt, my ankles hurt, and I run out of, out of air as well. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, he, uh, his, he is an international star, man that has uh, made many, many records and videos, musical videos, and he's just uh, renowned in, in all that he does. In recognition of his exemplary contributions to the arts and entertainment industry, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and actor, Ladies and gentlemen, the very handsome and popular and great Bobby Pulido. This man just won a Grammy a couple of weeks ago. How about that, guys? Go ahead, baby. All right. You're probably not used to tequila, but anyways. <laughs> well, I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've had many bad experiences with tequila. So, looking forward to the next one. <laughs> um, thank you, Frank, for having me here. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I have to thank you. And I, and I say this because, you know, we, uh, COVID came and, and we got hit real hard. I mean, I know everybody got hit hard, but the entertainment industry got hit harder than anybody else. We just, all of a sudden they said, you have no more gigs, that's it. And our, our gigs are really our lifeline of what we do. So I get a call out of the blue, I'm there sitting at the house, of course, doing nothing. And uh, Frank said, hey, we want you to do this thing, this commercial, and you know what? You made me feel useful, because at the time it was like, we, we didn't know what to do. We were just like, I don't know what to do. It's like one day we're an artist and the next day we don't feel like artists. And so uh, he said, I would really like this, you to do this message and everything. So thank you, for, thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. And Senator Lucio, I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of the Lucios. I'm a, I'm a fan and a friend of the Lucios and uh, sad to see you go. You. Sad to see you go because you. You so, you've done so much for the community and and been such a good friend to the family, and uh, thank you for all your, your, your work and your service that you did. And Paul, saludos, brother. And I'll never forget, dude, the very first Tejano Music Awards that I went to, uh, I met Paul Rodriguez, and, and he was, you know, ever since then, we saw him at the David Lee Gals, uh, tournament, he got us out of the tournament later, and I'm a big fan. You're, you're a great, great comedian. Unfortunately, your son is more famous than you. But uh, you need to tell them to pass some of those Instagram followers to you, bro, because you, because <laughs> you are the OG uh, comedian de la raza, man, and uh, you know, that's mad, mad respect, man. But thank you all very much. And uh... Bobby, thank you, Bobby, Bobby uh, my son told me to express also his gratitude. Um, he's waiting for you to play a little golf with him now that he's retiring. <laughs> Uh, and you know, I know you love the game of golf. I do. And you hit it down the, down the center of the fairway, 300 yards. He does, <laughs> folks. Um, but I hope you never change, you know, profession. You stay where you are and just enjoy the game of golf. But uh, Primetti and I are Texas flag, sir. Thank you. And also uh, a gavel from the Texas Senate uh, for being a, an exemplary uh, Texan that you are in everything that you do. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. And now for the last presentation. I, um, thank you, Bobby. And thank you, all of you. What a joy it is for me to, to stand before some of our Texas stars and the people of this state and Texas really great, you. Um, I met this young man a long time ago. I, I just can't remember when, but 
One thing that I noticed immediately, that he was a man of God. He really was a man of great faith, had a moral complex, uh, compass that he followed. And he came to the, once I got elected, he would come to the, to the, to the state capitol, you know, and, and give me a Bible lesson. Uh, he is my professor de la Biblia. He really uh, knows what he's talking about. And it's a joy to see Frank. Uh, when I do, um, you know, I just drop what I'm doing because I know I'm going to get a lesson. And we all need. And it's, it's important for us to, to listen to those beautiful prayers that are offered every time we come together because they're very meaningful. Um, but this man has really been a great leader, not only uh, in the industry, uh, this, the contractors, the Hispanic contracts of our country, but also in the Catholic Church, and quite frankly, uh, with men and women of all faith, is um, truly uh, someone that I admire. Um, the Pony Express didn't get there in time with his Texas flag, but I got a gavel here, and, and I, I intended to take a little bit, of, uh, you know, not steal the show from Paul, but, you know, they didn't bring me the gavel I wanted for him, so I took one that I had in my desk, and I made a duplicate. And uh, it says, to the great Ruben Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben Ramos, I mean, this is Frank Fuentes. But Frank, I want to tell all these people that next week uh, we, we're going to have the last rosary at the Capitol. Every Wednesday night, Wednesday morning, excuse me, we would have a rosary during the legislative sessions. Frank was there, and we prayed for the people of our great state, the people of our country, the people of this world that were less fortunate, that are less fortunate than we are. And we want, I want you all to pray for them tonight before you go to sleep. Pray for those that are out there despondent, that, that are not fortunate to, to have a bed to go to or a home or have a, a meal before they go to sleep. There's so many in our world. And I love Frank for, for his compassionate heart. And Frank, I'm going to present this symbol of greatness to you, but yours will say to the honor Frank Fuentes. Next week, I, will, I know you'll be at that rosary, and I'll present you, you know, your recognitions there. But I want everybody here to know how much I love this man. Congratulations, Frank Fuentes. Had I known, I would have bought myself a bottle of tequila. <laughs> it's got to go with a gavel. <laughs> Thank you very much, Senator. I got to tell you, though, while I, I am getting this recognition from this amazing uh, public leader, the recognition is not only mine. It belongs to our board of directors. We have our state chairman. Let me recognize him, Don Javier Arias, who from the very beginning when we formed our nonprofit, he was there. Don Javier, why don't you stand up so they can recognize him? Don Javier Arias comes all the way from, from Dallas just to be here with us today. Thank you, Don Javier, with his wonderful wife. We've got our local board members. We have Sal Chavarria. We have Luis Jauregui. We have Rudy Muñiz. Who am I missing, guys? Are we missing anybody else? And, of course, we have our wonderful staff, uh, Brianna. Brianna, where are you? Stand up so they can recognize you, Brianna Garcia. And... And of course, our, our amazing volunteer who has consistently this year just done amazing events for us, Yvette, where are you, Yvette? Yvette Chacon, yes. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Yvette. You, you're just amazing with your logistical skills. And I'm going to try to see if I can recognize some of our public officials. I hope I don't miss any, but I'm going to look across. And, and see if I could, uh, hopefully I won't miss anybody. But obviously you all met our, the, the wonderful Senator Lucia from South Texas. We have the Honorable Mayor from Pflugerville, Victor Gonzalez here with us. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. We have soon to be my, my County Commissioner, Jeff Trevilian. Jeff. 
And then to my left, my, one of my best friends, Hayes County Judge Becerra, Ruben Becerra, and his, and his amazing wife, Honey Bunny. Honey Bunny. We've got also our, our retired uh, city manager from the city of Austin, Jesus Garza. Jesus, if you don't mind. Yeah. I see the director of Homeland Security, Juan Ortiz, with us. Yes. Let's see. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? I, I, of course, you all met uh, Chief Chacon, our illustrious police chief. We have. And my very good friend, Chief Baker with the fire department. Yeah. Favorite chief. Favorite chief. <laughs> Who am I missing? Ah, y tenemos el, el señor consulado de México, uh, el consulado Merentes. Pablo Merentes, por favor. Y también tenemos el deputy council from Mexico. Where are you, Ruben? Roberto, where are you? Aquí está, mira, Ricardo Sánchez. You know, uh, the, 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 yes, you're hiding behind Shane. Of course, Shane, you have to mess it up for Robert. The chief, our EMS chief for the city of Austin, Robert. Thank you, Robert, for being here. You, you know, uh, the senator spoke about faith. Senator, we have a table here, table one, who consistently goes to our Bible classes at St. Mary's Cathedral, but they're also in construction. How about a round of applause for our St. Mary group down here? Yes. So we're going to move forward. Yes, I'm about to introduce them. Again, again, Chief Chacon trying to impose his authority over all of us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward, I want to introduce to you our mayor from the city of Austin, my very dear friend. He's been mayor for eight years. I guess it's about eight years. He's been amazing. Uh, his, his saying is, go big or go home. And I love that about him. Why don't you help me welcome Mayor Adler, Steve Adler, please. The mayor, the mayor. <laughs> so be, before you make the announcements, we're going to play those videos real quick. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask the young man to play one of the videos for Bobby and then the video for Paul. And you all will see the amazing work that, that Paul Rodriguez and Bobby Polito did for us during COVID. A message from my friends at the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association and Bobby Pulido. We never would have imagined how devastating the year could be with COVID-19. We greeted the year with hopes and dreams of a bright future. And let me tell you, that bright future still remains. If you've lost your job or a loved one due to the pandemic, I'm very sorry. There are no words that can fix the past, but together we can fix the future. You're not alone. Stay strong. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Faith is seeing the light with your heart when all your eyes see is darkness. Let's keep the faith, amigos. A message from Hi, I'm Paul Rodriguez. My friends at the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association have asked me to say a few words about the COVID-19 pandemic. Although Hispanics are the minority in this state, in this pandemic, we're the majority. We don't really know why. Maybe it's because we like to hug everybody in the room. That's all good and well, but until this pandemic is over, remember to maintain your distance, wash your hands, and put on your masks. And when this is over, we're gonna throw one huge party. I got the lines. Who's got the cold ones? You know, COVID was just absolutely unprecedented challenge. For, 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 for communities across the, the world. Uh, and, and certainly we were no exception here. And there were so many heroes that we had that, 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 helped, that helped us. 
you know, we had the governor and, and emergency services in the state, uh, the health department, folks that were uh, helping to, to provide things that we would want uh, every time that we, every time that we asked. Um, we also had our, our local heroes that, that did amazing things because something really special happened in our, our local community. And then I appreciate the opportunity to, to pause here. You know, the, the mortality rate from COVID here in, in Central Texas was half the mortality rate even of the state of Texas as a whole. Uh, something, something very special and magical happened in this city in part because of the people that we have here. And I'm real happy, Frank, that you've already recognized and recognized the, uh, the, the, the chiefs that we had and, and, and Juan uh, helping our city and, and my colleagues, the elected officials, uh, the commissioner and the, and, the, and the mayor and the county judge. Uh, but the, the, you know, these, these were people that uh, you know, I was talking to on a daily basis as we were going through COVID. Uh, but as extraordinary as their performance was, we were all doing our jobs. Uh, we were elected or appointed or hired to, to do this work, and, and these folks did miraculous stuff, but it was, it was our job to, to do that. There were a few people who, who did really special things that, that, that made significant differences, who were doing something that, that it just wasn't their job. These are folks that just stepped forward and you just saw two of them. And, and, and we're gonna recognize three here now uh, that, that, that really stepped forward when, when it wasn't their job and help deliver the, the magic uh, to this community. So I have a proclamation, Frank, if I can, for, for two for who, who you've already recognized with uh, bottles of tequila, which is much preferred over proclamations, I might add, but they don't, they don't, I'm not allowed to give out bottles of tequila, but I, but I can give out proclamations, so I'm gonna do that and I have, I have two here for, for, for Paul Rodriguez and for Bobby Polito, uh, and I want to read them. Uh, they, they, they read the same. Uh, proclamation, be it known that whereas Bobby Polito and Paul Rodriguez contributed their talent, their time, their energy to support the U.S. Hispanic Contractor, Contractors Association as a tireless advocate to provide informative education through COVID public service messages. And whereas using their special talents to entertain and connect with the public, their public service messages reach tens of, of thousands of Austinites and fellow Texans and Americans uh, to promote COVID-19 awareness, prevention, and availability of COVID-19 testing and vaccine sites provided the, by the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association, thus saving immeasurable health and, and financial hardship and the lives of our residents. Now, therefore, I, Steve Adler, mayor of the city of, of Austin, Texas, do hereby proclaim December 5th of the year 2022 as Paul Rodriguez and Bobby Polito Day in Austin, Texas. And then I want to give one out here too. Um, uh, throughout this process of, of COVID, 
there were a lot of things that, that were surprises to all of us because we didn't really know what was going to be happening. There were so many unknowns. We were, we were all figuring this out. But there were some things that I knew for an absolute certainty were going to be part of our COVID response. And that was that once a week, I was going to get a call from Frank telling me everything that we were not doing right. That is very true. <laughs> and, and I know it's only because we love each other so much. Those, those were often heated phone calls because, because we were both incredibly frustrated at what it was that we were dealing with and so many people were hurting and there was just no way to be able to anticipate everything that had to be done or to have the resources to be able to be everywhere that we needed to be. Uh, and, and, and I would listen to Frank and try to learn from Frank and try to, to lobby and encourage the deployment of resources and I would end every phone call by saying to Frank, well, if you know better, why don't you just do it? <laughs> and, yes, Frank, <laughs> and Frank would say, okay, I will. <laughs> yes, I did. And he <laughs> did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he did such wonderful things. And he did such wonderful things with people in this room. And, and Frank was able to find resources, quite frankly, that, that we in the city could not find or did not have access to. Um, and for that, I wanted to make sure that you gave me the invitation to, to, to thank um, uh, these two guys and, and, and to declare a day for them. And I welcome that opportunity, but I was not going to leave this podium without also recognizing you and the, and the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association. So I have a third proclamation that I was not asked uh, or discussed to, to do. Be it known that whereas the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association worked as a tireless advocate at the city, state, and national levels to provide assistance to the construction and other essential industries through bilingual education, distribution of, of personal protective equipment, the PPE, uh, the COVID-19 testing and vaccines, distribution of food assistance, and obtaining critical federal funding for businesses during COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas founded 30 years ago in Austin, Texas, the U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association demonstrated great leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic by partnering with the city of Austin, the Austin Independent School District, Superintendent Dr. Stephanie Elizalde, Austin Independent School District Health Director Alana Bejarano, Consulate General of Mexico, Consul General Pablo Marentes, uh, the um, uh, Catholic Diocese of Austin, Bishop Joe Vasquez, Sacred Heart Catholic Parish Father Mark Hamlet in the state of Texas, all to meet the needs of, the, of our community. Now, therefore, I, Steve Adler, Mayor of the city of Austin, Texas, do hereby also proclaim December 5th of the year 2022 as U.S. Hispanic Contractors Association Day in Austin, Texas. Thank you so much. I'm going to have Lee say a few words. Thank you. Thank you all. Hey. Thank you so much. Luis, if you don't mind coming up. Thank you. You know, it, it, it's... Thank you, thank you all so much. So, those were strange times. It's hard to believe that a year ago, we were still dealing with COVID. And yes, I was still calling the mayor once a week. And yes, we were still yelling at each other. 
But the beautiful thing about Mayor Adler is that he respects every opinion. At the end of the call, we were still friends. And that goes to his leadership. Thank you, Mayor Adler. I also want to say that we had our board of directors and we had meetings almost weekly, remember Sal? And I also had somebody yelling at me constantly. We have an incredible, brilliant mind in Eva Price. Eva, stand up so they can stand, uh, introduce you. So Eva Price works at the national level with us and she's, she's just brilliant. And so she would always you know, call us and, and either yell at us or, or tell us, look, this is what we should be doing. And she was constantly researching. And of course, our, our staff, uh, Brianna. But at this point, I want to introduce to you one of our board of directors, Luis Hauregui, who'd like to, really, they deserve this probably more than I do. No, there no. you go. Thank you, Frank. You bet. Well, it's, thank you, Frank. And thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's my privilege to be here in this celebration. And, uh, you know, we talked a lot about COVID and the big challenge. And it, all the stories that you hear tonight are, are true. They're, they're not exaggeration. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it probably is a downplaying of how intense it was. We were all very scared, but we had such a great community support with all the leaders in this room, starting with our mayor, and you're right about the weekly calls. <laughs> and I remember Frank will get us, come on guys, we gotta get together, we gotta talk to the mayor, we gotta talk to the county judge, we gotta talk to the diocese, we gotta talk to the consulate, we gotta talk to the schools. I mean, we were everywhere, I said, Frank, we gotta get some work done, I gotta make a living, <laughs> you know? But, uh, but we were very, were very proud to uh, accept this uh, this gift, and we're very honored. Uh, I'm very honored to be part of this uh, association, um, and I belong to several other associations, an architect and a home builder, but being part of the Hispanics Contractors Association is a, is a great honor to me, uh, being a Hispanic uh, background, and I, I thank everybody here uh, for participating and being part of the celebration. Uh, many things amazing how something like um, this pandemic brought all of us together and we succeeded like mayor mentioned we had such great results in our community and uh, we should be all very proud of it so thank you very much So Frank, there's a special scholarship award, I guess, that the um, uh, U.S. Hispanic contractors are, are, are awarding today, and I appreciate the opportunity to be, be a part of it. Uh, and, and this is one that, that, that you're giving to, um, to, to Miriam um, uh, Mirzakel. Your guess is as good as mine. She'll, she'll help us when she, when she comes up. She, she, will say, she, will, she will correct us. Okay, Miriam uh, is a 22-year-old student uh, who was born in Kabul, Afghanistan, and has lived here in Austin for nearly one year. Along with her father, uh, Shafiq, who worked at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, her mother, Nuria, a biology teacher, and four of her siblings, Miriam, came to the United States as part of Operation Allies Welcome Program. After leaving their home in, in Afghanistan in August of 2021, and then living for several months at Fort McCoy in Wisconsin, the Mirzakel family moved to Austin to begin their new lives in America and pursue a path toward United States citizenship. Miriam currently attends both the Goodwill Excel School and Austin Community College. We're also working here at the Renaissance Hotel. In addition, she volunteers to help others newly arrived Afghans by providing translation for families at Lee Elementary School and alongside the organization Austin Jews and Partners for Refugees, where she has helped with translation, clothing drives, and registering students for ESL, English as a Second Language, classes at Austin Community College. 
in her spare time, of which she has very little. <laughs> Maryam enjoys TikTok, riding her new bike, spending time with her family and new friends that she's made, and staying in touch via WhatsApp with many friends and family that are still in Afghanistan. But Frank, the Contractor Association has a $1,000 scholarship for her, and I'm excited to be part of this presentation. Is Mary Ann with us? Let me say a few words. So, so several, several weeks ago, uh, the association hosted a delegation from the state of Coahuila. And they, they stayed here at this hotel. That's when we were able to meet not only uh, Farah, I call her Farah because I can't pronounce her last name, Miss Farah and Mariam. And we were so impressed by not only their work ethic, but also their desire to learn more about this country. We were so impressed because it reminded me so much of our people that come from Mexico also. This need, this desire to do better, not only for themselves, but for, but for their family, that we just couldn't help ourselves but give her this scholarship, a much needed scholarship, so that she can continue her education. Congratulations, Miriam. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank Frank the Witness and the U.S. Hispanic uh, Contractors Association and all the local board members for awarding me this scholarship. My sister and I have enjoyed uh, getting to know uh, your group as you come to our hotel where we work for many events. Um, as you know, uh, I want to tell you a little about my family and um, uh, Education is very important to my family, and uh, they always uh, tell us that education is very important, and uh, uh, you have to um, help other people to be educated too. Um, and uh, as you know, my father worked at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan, and my mother was a, a teacher in uh, Afghanistan for more than 25 years. And... Um, uh, my brother, Naveed, graduated from software engineering, and now he works at, in Germany. And um, my brother, Ahmad Rashad, who is here tonight, uh, he was in, um, he was, uh, in uh, Kabul Polytechnic University for studying uh, uh, geology, and uh, geology engineering and hydrology. Um, and uh, my sister, Farah Nas, who works uh, with me here in the hotel, graduated from university and was studying to be a judge before we had to leave our country. My younger brothers, Mustafa and Omar, are in high school and fourth grade and are learning very quickly in American schools. They are also learning Spanish as well as English because they have a lot of friends who speak Spanish. Um, when you gave me this scholarship, it means I can continue my education here. And I can uh, be whatever kind of professional I want to be and uh, have a good future in America. As you know, women in Afghanistan do not have this opportunity right now. And I hope someday uh, soon it will change. Um, one of the... One of the first words that I learned from my uh, best friend here in America was a Spanish word. Uh, this was Amiga. And she always called me Amiga. And uh, one day I asked her, why you always call me Amiga? And what does it mean? And she said to me, this is a very important word that you should know. And it means friend. And um, when I came first to America, I looked around me and I thought with myself, how can I continue my studies here? And how can we continue our life here? Everything was new, everything was different, and everything was difficult. And um, uh, then we started to meet friends 
uh, and uh, uh, make friends. And then we did uh, not feel so alone and afraid. And we made friends like our boss at the restaurant, John and Paddy in HR, who was very helpful for us. And uh, now we are meeting all of you, and now we have more friends, more amigos. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, I will always remember these camps from you. And I, and I want you to know that the whole of my family says thank you. Muchas gracias. Yeah. Guys, we're, warm, we're just getting warmed up. That's right, next to the stage, we have a little bit of entertainment. Uh, I met Paul Rodriguez, I'm gonna say about 22, 23 years ago at a fundraiser in LA, and we have been friends since then. And I remember one time, Paul, you came up to Austin and you asked me, Frank, pick me up at the airport. I said, sure. Picked him up at the airport, and I asked him, where do you want to go? He goes, I need to go to the Rio Grande Valley. I said, what? That's a six-hour drive. But you know what? You just can't say no to Paul. So I drove, we drove six hours to the Rio Grande Valley where he had to perform. Funny story, on the way back, the, uh, the, 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 the immigration stopped us. And he was, he, was, he, was, he was asleep, and I said, Paul, you're from Hollywood. You better not be. You better not have anything in those in those in your suitcase. And all they really wanted to do, Senator, all they wanted to do was take a picture with Paul. So I was like, Ah, thank God. My good friends, be prepared to laugh, because this man is funny. Paul, come and entertain us, my friend. Yeah. How do you follow that? I'm so moved by, our, by our, our friends from Afghanistan. I, I had the privilege to go to uh, Kabul and uh, um, Kandahar. I was there to entertain the troops um, uh, with uh, uh, the great uh, legendary Wayne Newton. We went down there. And, um, you know, your heart goes out because there's so much, uh, uh, what do you say, there's so much uh, familiarity, you know. They, they look like us. Uh, you know, they with the same color of skin. A lot of people don't know that right now we are, we're in the middle of a, a, a possible nuclear conflict with the, with the Russians. But the, this war is between white people and whiter people. So uh, <laughs> for Mexicans and blacks, it's like looking at the Winter Olympics. You know, we, uh, we really don't have a dog in this fight. So we, we hope things work out. It's, uh, it's hard to find humor in, in something so tragic, you know. What I do find humorous is that the uh, president of Russia, uh, his last name is a, is, is a bad word in Spanish, you know. It's a, he's a Putin, which, uh, which in Spanish it means little puto. I don't know if he knows that. Uh, it's, it's like you have your uh, puto, your puto, and your Putin, which is like a midget puto, and... Uh, it's not a word I use lightly, you know. I, I, I don't want to offend any uh, midgets. I'm sorry, little people. I, I once dated a girl that uh, was a, a midget, and uh, I was nuts over her. But that's uh, that's uh, that's my problem. Some of you'll get these jokes on the way home. By the way, it's, uh, it's very high stuff, you know. I would like now to recognize anybody here who hasn't been recognized who. Uh, who perhaps has uh, low self-esteem, and you would like to stand up if you haven't stood up already, please take this time uh, to, uh, to, to, we'll recognize you for whatever reason you want, you know, uh, we'll find the reason. Uh, if you're breathing, we're able to recognize you for that. Uh, I feel very fortunate, uh, and at the same time, misfortunate by uh, knowing Frank Fuentes. He's a, uh, I've tried to change my number several times, I don't know. 
how he does it, but he manages to find you. And uh, you had to do this thing for Texas. I said, I don't know if you know this, but I live in California. Not that I'm happy about that. It's just that, you know, home is wherever your mama lives. And uh, I happen to live in California, not very proud of it. Uh, you know, uh, pretty soon, uh, like millions, uh, I will move to Texas also, you know, because uh, who can handle it over there? We're, we're over there, we're paying uh, $7 a gallon in taxes. That's how smart our legislations are. $7 a gallon. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that the uh, gasoline affects every part of your life, uh, especially your love life, because uh, now I'm only dating women who are within a two gallon radius of my house. <laughs> Anybody that's three gallon fine, I don't care who you are, you're not in my category. Uh, you know, J-Lo called and I said, look, I'm sorry, you're four gallons away, that's a, uh, uh, you're out of my range. Of course, uh, her name is J-Lo, but uh, you know, time will take its toll, soon she'll be jello like the rest of us, you know. <laughs> time spares nobody. I, I can make these jokes about her because I've been friends with her for many years. Uh, in fact, she, she invited me to her wedding and I said, look, I'm busy. This week, I'll go to the next one. And uh, <laughs> trust me, there'll be another one. You know, just, you know uh, who knows? Maybe I'm, I'll be the 25th husband. I, I hold hopes. <laughs> you know, in, in, in these times of, uh, of, uh, of great trouble, I, I've always envied uh, Texans. You know, you have a way of, uh, of, uh, of collusion, cohesion putting yourselves together and, and overcoming troubles. First time I came to Texas, I was a, a guest of the government. I, uh, I went to Lackland Air Force Base. I, uh, I went down there and uh, you know I just got off the bus and somebody began to holler at me and then they shaved my head and, and gave me a uniform that, that just didn't go with my skin. You know, as a, the Air, I don't know if you've seen any Air Force uniforms. We, they're, they're not the fanciest, you know. My, my cousins, they were in the Marines, you know, they had a, they had the khakis and they had the, they looked so sharp. Women were crazy. Because most women, am I, am I right? Most women love a man in a uniform, you know? <laughs> Not all uniforms, because when I used to deliver pizza for Domino's, I, uh, <laughs> I never got lucky, you know? Was, I only got pizza, but uh, nevertheless, I, I went to uh, San Antonio, Texas, and uh, it was nice not to be a minority for a change, you know? You're, you're in San Antonio, you, everybody else is a minority, you know. I, I see lonely white men there, I go, hola amigo, could I help you? Welcome to uh, our country. And uh, it, it, it always, I always enjoy the uh, uh, Texans. The Texans have a certain swagger that we in California don't, don't have. Uh, there's nothing to swagger about, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of like, a, I mean, uh, all the jobs are coming here, you know. Uh, you guys took our Tesla plant, and uh, I don't know what else you're going to take, but you could have it. You could have it. Uh, I'm looking for, forward to a... Uh, I live in a uh, million-dollar uh, uh, one-bedroom apartment. It's uh, you, You'd love it. Uh, Hispanic contractors, I could use you, you know. I'm, I could, uh, could use you. It's a, it's a sad life. But uh, again, I... Um, I've always had great love for Texas and jealousy and envy and all those other things that, that the Bible tells you you shouldn't have for, for other people, you know. I, I like the fact that, uh, that uh, Texans are Texans first. And uh, no matter where you're at, they're always Texans, you know. Uh, you know, you forget that at one time this was a republic. You know, it was a republic in itself. No other state can claim that. Uh, maybe Hawaii, but uh, come on, who can swim that far? You know, uh, <laughs> Uh, me, that's who I, I've actually been there. I, uh, in, my, uh, in my lifetime, I've been around the world uh, twice, uh, but, but twice, and I, um, I've not seen any of it. I always land there at night and leave at night, so uh, I didn't get to see it. But, uh, you know, uh, as a serviceman, uh, I'm very proud to have served uh, uh, the United States uh, Air Force and in my capacity. I, I made sure that, uh, you know, because when you are in the service, you, uh, it really is your country, you know? As I speak to you right now, uh, I've been to, um, I just finished, well not just, but, but about eight months ago, I, I uh, uh, did about um, 12 bases in the, in the Far East. A lot of us don't realize that there are young men, kids really, out there in some forgot, God forsaken island in, in Guam. Have you ever heard of Guam? I've been there, you don't wanna go. Uh, it's, uh, 
Guam has a distinction of being an island where there was a, a Japanese soldier there that uh, in, in the 1980s, he, he didn't know the war was over. You know, and then he came out in the 1980s and, and they took him to Japan and his wife was still waiting for him, which told me that that could never happen with Mexicans. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> the wife would have been married three times already, you know, come back from the war and go, hey, ¿qué pasó? And uh, <laughs> these kids don't look like me. Uh, that's our own problems. Uh, where am I going with this? I have no idea. Uh, but uh, he didn't know. Uh, think about that. He didn't know that the war had been over for 40-something years. Now, you would think by, by him, you know, looking at the parking lot and the names of all the Japanese cars out there, you know, it would have crossed his mind that, hey, maybe we won. But, uh, but no, he didn't look at it like that. I, that joke is only makes me laugh. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's irony, you know. Uh, I'm always amazed that, uh, for example, during uh, Veterans Day, uh, Toyota, a Japanese company, has a Memorial Day sale, you know? What are they doing, bragging, gloating? Uh, you know, Jesus, we shot Grandpa, but we're gonna give you a deal on this car here. You know, let's, let's make it up to you. Uh, I have great memories of, of, of Texas, and I also uh, planned on, um, on uh, living here, retiring here, but uh, things didn't work out like that, you know? Uh, the IRS said, no, I have to stay in California, and, and we all got to do what they do because that's, uh, that's what funds our fun. And um, I, um, I am uh, very, very happy to be here. Not that I had a choice. You know, with, uh, with, with Frank, you don't have a choice. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll bring, dig out those stories. I remember when I drove you 600 miles. <laughs> You're going to say no to me? I, I drove you across the border, and uh, I snuck you into my pocket, and he came in. I, I told him you were my son, even though you were wearing a dress, Paul. These are the things I've done for you. All right, Frank, I'll be there, damn it. I don't know what he told Bobby Pulido, but uh, I'm sure it was probably the same story. Huh? You know, Bobby, I knew your dad when he was a transvestite, and I, I have pictures of him, and uh, these things shouldn't come out, Bobby, and they won't come out if you come over here and sing for free. Bobby goes, all right, all right. Salieron de la madrugada. You know, folks, uh, now is the time when we should all hold hands for no apparent reason and, uh, and pass on whatever virus we're carrying, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, what makes America, America, from someone who has been deported many times, <laughs> I can tell you that regardless of where your ancestry is from, you always have that, that joy whenever you're, you're uh, in another country that you have, you're representing a, a dream for them, really. America still is the, the dream, the goal, you know. Uh, to come here, is a, as, as my Afghani friends will know, it's a, it's a privilege. It's very different, you know. Every country I go to, some uh, hear things about us. The fact is that we truly are the most giving and most generous people. You know, we, uh, we will send food to our enemies. And that's, uh, well, that's something to be proud of, you know. I don't know where I'm going. I get all emotional because, um, <laughs> but it truly is the, something that we can all be proud of in uh, all the places that I've had the privilege to annoy people with my act. <laughs> you know, I too remember, I, when I was in the Air Force, I got stationed in a place that's not all that uh, uh, fun. I was stationed in Iceland. I did a couple of jokes about the general, didn't go well. <laughs> and I found myself in a radar site in Iceland. Uh, <laughs> uh, it curved my career. Uh, you know, I kept my countries, I, I don't know how safe I was keeping them from, I don't know, being attacked by polar bears or something. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't going to happen during my watch. But, uh, but I always remember the, the hope of, of coming home. Yeah. You know, 
I don't know, soy tan chillón Soy tan chillón, las lágrimas salen tan fácil Estoy hablando en español simplemente para que Univision tenga la oportunidad de Darme un trabajo For those of you that don't speak Spanish, I can only say you learn And uh, perhaps this will widen your opportunities It's not that hard really uh, Spanish is one of these languages that um, one word can get you through the day if you know how to intone it, you know. Uh, for example, uh, the word mira could be mira, mira, mira. You know, it depends on how you say it. It could mean a myriad of things. It's a, they always say it's not a difficult language to learn because, well, hell, we learned it. Uh, and, uh, but English is. English, as you'll know as an immigrant, is a very difficult language to learn. Sometimes I think on purpose. You know, uh, I was never good at the spelling. Uh, think, take the word Wednesday, for example. Uh, Wednesday is not phonetic. You go, what is the D doing there, you know? <laughs> wetness day, you know? No, it's not. If you say wetness day, people go, hey, what's wrong with you? Are you incontinent? No, it's, a, it's Wednesday, but you don't, see, you don't hear the D, you know? Uh, I think they do that so you don't pass your test at the... Uh, I always see nefarious reasons for these things, you know. But, uh, you know, time has taken its toll on me, as you can see. I, uh, all the vigor, all the excitement of youth, is, it's gone. All I'm left now is uh, with the, the rummages of what I used to be, you know. <laughs> I remember hearing a teacher of mine one time saying that, uh, that youth should be spent making memories Because at the end of your life, that's all you'll have, you know, these memories that, uh, that, uh, that your, your father would say. For example, my father had one or two jokes, and he forgot that we were his family. We've heard every joke he had, but he always went back to the joke, and he hated when we beat him to the punchline. He said, ah, ustedes no comprenden, no comprenden lo, lo que es tener la satisfacción. My dad was, uh, he's passed on now, you know, so is my mom. And, uh, I miss my mom more than my father. My father was a good man. He was a family man. He had two of them. And uh, <laughs> he really believed in the family. <laughs> But I think it's natural to love your mother more, isn't it? There's just something more, more, more personal. It's natural to love your mother. I mean, no one ever got into a fight in school because somebody said something about your dad. <laughs> hey, your dad is a borracho. Only thing you can say is, You know my dad. <laughs> Tell him to come on over. I, I need some tennis shoes. So when they talk about your mama that you were able to, uh, that, that you were willing to defend her honor, you know. My mom was, uh, she uh, had bad timing. She died on Mother's Day on, uh, on uh, uh, 2013, you know, on Mother's Day. And before, before she passed away, she, uh, she called me at, at, at home in Los Angeles. She lives in Fresno. And uh, she said, uh, Paul, call all your brothers and sisters and, uh, and, and tell them to come on over to the ranch. I'm going to go see your father on Saturday. Uh, seeing my father on Saturday was her way of saying she was, uh, was going to be dying that day. And, and I hopped on my car, and I, I, I think I made it to Fresno, a two-and-a-half-hour drive. I think I made it in about an hour and 15 minutes. I, I, I didn't, uh, thank God we didn't have a police chief like the one you have. Uh, <laughs> I broke every law and hurried home. I wanted her all to myself, you know. I wanted to talk to her. What, what is this about your dying mama? I walked in and I, I see her in bed and I held her hand and I said, Mi reina, my queen, what is this about you're going to go see my dad on this Saturday? You don't know the day you're going to die, mama. Only God knows that day. She says, I don't know, you know. Us Rodriguez women, we have that gift. Oh, the Rodriguez family has a psychic gift. We know the day we're going to die. I said, that. come on, ma. He goes, your uncle Manuel knew the day he was going to die. I said, yeah, judge told him, ma. It's, it's, a, it's a totally different reason. You know? She said, Paul, mijo, do me a favor. Anything, mama? She said, be a good boy. Be a good boy, Paul, so that when your time comes, you can go up to heaven and, and your dad and I will be there to greet you and we can be a family all together again. And my only reservation was, uh, 
my dad's going to be there too. <laughs> she thought about it. She goes, all right, maybe it'll just be me. <laughs> but can't you be a good boy? Well, Ma, I'm an old guy. I had open heart surgery last year. And uh, there was nothing wrong with my heart. I just wanted to show my ex-girlfriend that I have one. Uh, she, <laughs> she doubted it, kept questioning it. I said, look, I took a picture. <laughs> you know, uh, you think about these things, you know. You think about uh, your, your day will come. And what does it mean at the end of the day? What was your life like? What did you contribute to? What will you miss? Will you be missed? You know, because nobody in their dying bed ever thinks about all the money they have, all the properties they own, all the material things they have. You know, the only uh, thing you have is to leave, to leave a big gaping hole in the hearts of your friends. When you're missed, that is the biggest compliment. And this pandemic has has made me miss so many people. I mean, it didn't care about race or age. It just took indiscriminately. Man, I can't tell you the, how many funerals I've been to. And yet, we go on. We go on because it is what we do. That's why I'm here crying like an old woman. But these are tears of joy, people. Because like you Texans, and with you, we overcame this. And we will overcome any other thing that life throws at us. Because, damn it, we're Texans. That's what we do. Thank you. Have a good evening. I leave you with Bobby Pulido and Frank Fuentes. Ah, you're the best. God bless all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, how about that? 20 years he's been entertaining us. He's been entertaining this organization. Now I'd like to introduce to you a, a, Grammy, a Grammy winner. He won a Grammy award a couple of weeks ago. And he's been a good friend not only to this organization, but to all of us. Huh? He's well known not only in the U.S., but also in Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to perform for us tonight. Give him a round of applause. Actually, uh, normally there's a band on stage already and it's set up. <laughs> uh, not used to this, and I don't have the, I'm not blessed with a gift of gab like Paul, man. Gosh, I got to follow that. The band didn't come. I can, you want me to raffle? Okay, great. Hey, man, just with one condition. Can I, can I win, too? Yeah, absolutely. All right. My ticket's right there over there, man. I just don't want nobody saying, hey, Hugo Chanchullo. Okay. 